Alright, so now that we've worked out how many bricks we have in our dwarf wall, the next thing we need to work out is how many bricks do we need for our engaged piers. And we put our engaged piers in to support our wall, and make it a little bit stronger, and it also um, provides support for our bearers when we go to put our bearers and joists in. So we need to know how many bricks we need in our engaged piers. So the first thing to work out is where our engaged piers are going to go and how many that we need. So we go back to our plan view and our original dimensions. Now what we actually need to do is work out what our internal dimensions are. So we can take 110 mil off each side for our brick and get our new internal dimensions. You don't need all of them, you won't need these two long sides, but you definitely need these uh, four short sides. So now what we do, we're going to look at each short side by itself. So I'm going to take this one here, 2 metres 150 first. Uh, oh, sorry, a bear is going to run that way. Bearers generally run the long dimension of the building. In this case it doesn't matter because it's equal, but they generally run the long dimension of the building. So the formula is the building length divided by the bearer or our joist spacing plus 1. So, as I said, I'm going to take this one first, this length here, and our bearer joist spacing is going to be 1.8 metres. So, 2.150 divided by 1.8 plus 1, okay, um, gave us uh, 1.194, which we're going to say 2, always round up in this case, plus 1, so it gives us 3. Uh, engage piers along this side. So let's put those in. One there, one there, and one there. So there's our three. Okay. So now let's still keep going down. We'll look at this one here. So 2.390 divided by 1.8. In this case, we don't need to add the one because uh, we've already got this one here. So we're just going to put one there and one there. So there's our two there and we have a line, I'll have to put one in here a little bit later. Okay, so that's that way done. Um, and what we can then do is just replicate whatever's on this side of the building. Same has to happen on this side. Okay, this one is not super critical because our bear is actually going to be running this way, but we try and keep everything in line so everything's evenly spaced. Okay, now let's work our way across this way. So this one's 2.150 again. So we know we're going to need three for that. However, we've already got two. So we just need to drop another one in the middle there. And similarly, on this other side, we know we needed two there before. So we can just drop one in there. And we need one on this corner. And I tend to put one going each way on the internal corners. Sorry. That must be the next step. So, if we just replicate what's on these walls up here, again, keeping everything in line, um, we'll end up with that many, and I'll put my second one on the internal corner. So there we go, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 engaged peers. Okay, so we know we've got 17 peers. Now, how many bricks are in each pier? So, if we take the height of our wall, which you might remember from the previous video was 516 mil, so 516 divided by the height of one brick and one bed of mortar, which we refer to as a course, a course of brickwork is 86 mil high or 0 0.086 metres high. So 516 divided by 86 gives us 6 bricks high for this wall. So then it's just a simple matter of 17 piers, 6 bricks per pier, gives us 102 bricks for this, uh, this particular wall. You could of course then allow some waste if you wanted to. Um, or you could add the original amount, you could add that to your dwarf wall total and then work the waste out at the end. 
So there you go, that's how we work out how many engaged peers we need and how many bricks we need for the engaged peers.